I would like to introduce you to two important principles, the founder principle and the congruence principle. Let us begin with the founder principle. Most revivalists were Yiddish-speaking Ashkenazim from Eastern Europe. Furthermore, as indicated by Sfirat Yehudei Eretz Israel, a census conducted in 1916-1918 by Roberto Baki, the Ashkenazim were those who were most receptive to the Hebrew revival. 61.9% of Ashkenazic children and 28.5% of Ashkenazic adults spoke Israeli in 1916-1918. The percentage of Israeli speakers among Sephardim, constituting most of the veteran residents in Eretz Israel, and the other Mizrahim, excluding the Yemenites, Jews who originating from the Yemen, was low. Only 18.3% of Sephardic children and 8.4% of Sephardic adults spoke Israeli in 1916-1918, whilst 18.5% of Mizrahi children, excluding Sephardim and Yemenites, and 7.3% of Mizrahi adults spoke Israeli. CF 53.1% among Yemenite children and 37.6% among Yemenite adults. To obtain an idea of the approximate real numbers, one should note that between 1850 and 1880, approximately 25,000 Jews immigrated to Eretz Israel, mostly Ashkenazim, from Eastern Europe. In 1890, a total of only 40,000 Jews lived in Eretz Israel. Between 1881 and 1903, 20,000 to 30,000 Jews arrived in Eretz Israel. I propose that had the revivalists and their followers been Arabic-speaking Jews, for example, from Morocco, the Israeli language would have been a totally different language, both genetically and typologically, much more Semitic. The impact of the founder population on Israeli is much more significant than that of later immigrants, no matter how large the numbers of the latter have been. For example, the influence of several hundreds of Russian speakers at the end of the 19th century, when Israeli began, was significantly larger than that of one million Russian speakers arriving in Israel at the end of the 20th century, when Israeli was already fully fledged. The following is how Zelinsky describes in 1973 the influence of first settlements from the point of view of cultural geography. Whenever an empty territory undergoes settlement, or an earlier population is dislodged by invaders, the specific characteristics of the first group able to effect a viable self-perpetuating society are of crucial significance to the later social and cultural geography of the area, no matter how tiny the initial band of settlers may have been. In terms of lasting impact, the activities of a few hundred or even a few score initial colonizers can mean much more for the cultural geography of a place than the contributions of tens of thousands of new immigrants generations later. Harrison and others discuss in 1988 the founder effect in biology and human evolution and Mufwene applies it in 2001 as a creolistic tool to explain why the structural features of so-called creoles are largely predetermined by the characteristics of the languages spoken by the founder population, that is, by the first colonists. I propose the following application of the founder principle in the context of Israeli. Yiddish is a primary contributor to Israeli, because it was the mother tongue of the vast majority of revivalists and first pioneers in Eretz Israel at the critical period of the beginning of Israeli. The founder principle works because by the time later immigrants came to Israel, Israeli had already entrenched the fundamental parts of its grammar. Thus, Moroccan Jews arriving in Israel in the 1950s had to learn a fully-fledged language. The influence of their mother tongue on Israeli was relatively negligible. At the same time, and unlike the antithesis, my synthesis proposes that liturgical Hebrew too fulfills the criteria for being a primary contributor to Israeli for the following reasons. 
First, despite millennia without native speakers, Hebrew persisted as a most important cultural, literary, and liturgical language throughout the generations. Second, Zionist revivalists were extremely ideological and made a huge effort to reclaim Hebrew and were in fact partially successful. By and large, whilst Israeli phonology and phonetics are mostly European, as we have already seen, its morphological forms and basic vocabulary are mainly, albeit not exclusively, Semitic. The figure on the screen illustrates this generalization. Phonology is less revivable than phonetics because intonation, for example, is less revivable than a specific consonant. Within semantics, connotations and associations are less revivable than senses, 